Welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial brought to you by Acres HD. Now, some of you may have seen the most recent dynamics test that I posted yesterday, which was taking a look at the emitter and attractor objects within Cinema 4D. So, this is the example and what we're going to be building today. So, let's head on into Cinema and get started. So, here's the scene, here's how it's built up. You can take a closer look. We've got two emitters and a tractor, wind and gravitor. So there's quite a lot going on here. I'm not sure how long this tutorial is actually going to be but we're going to try and work through it as fast as possible but while still trying to give you as much information about the effects that we're using today. So I'm just going to open up a new scene and going to create a new floor and a new background that's fine and we're going to make a new material and texture gradient click on the gradient and we're going to change it from 2DU to 2DV we're going to change the black to white like so and then the white just to a light grey that's all good and now what we're going to do, we're going to apply that material to both the floor and the background. Like so. And we're just going to select the material of the floor and go to projection and change the projection from flat to frontal. And then right click on the floor object, Cinema 4D tags, compositing tag and under the compositing tag we're going to uncheck self shadowing and check composite background and that gives us just a nice white studio to work with so first off I'm going to create a sphere like so move it up scale it right down we want really really small sphere and change the segments to around 8 but you want to make sure that render perfect is on so even though we've got eight segments in our cube when we render we still get a perfect round sphere and now what we're going to do we're going to add the emitter and we can do that by going to this tab here and then selecting emitter and now that we've got our emitter we're just going to move this up just a little bit and we're going to make the sphere a child of the emitter and we can do that it's really easy just drag and drop the sphere onto the emitter and then select the emitter and you want to make sure show objects is checked just so it knows that we are emitting the sphere so if we press play now there's our basic emitter but it's not being affected by gravity or dynamics and to do that we need to select the sphere go over to simulation simulation dynamics create rigid body and just to make sure the spheres don't fall through the floor we're going to select the floor and go to dynamics create collider so if we hit play now we've got some nice dynamic spheres being emitted and I'm just going to change the timeline to 350 frames so we get a nice long timeline to work with cool so if we select our emitter now we get birth rate editor and birth rate renderer and what that means is the birth rate editor is how many spheres or objects you will see in the preview so we're currently in the preview now and the birth rate renderer is how many spheres you will see when it's actually fully rendered so I'm going to set the editor to 30 and the renderer to 60 so now we're going to see 30 spheres in the preview but actually when we render the full thing we're actually going to see 60 60 spheres and stop and start emission pretty self explanatory we want it to start emitting at zero frames so straight away and we want it to end emission at around 180 
180 frames that should be just fine so it's going to carry on emitting spheres till frame 180 and then after frame 180 it's going to stop emitting like so and the next one that we really need to worry about is speed now obviously speed once again is pretty self-explanatory it's the velocity in which these spheres are emitted from the emitter so if you bump this right up to maybe 600 you're going to see these spheres come out really fast to the emitter like so that's all good and just the last thing we need to change is the scale so currently the end scale is set to 0% so all the spheres are exactly the same size but I like to change this to around 75% so what we get is some large spheres and some small spheres and what we can do if we select our sphere and hit T on the keyboard we're just going to scale down the sphere even more like so cool so we're getting there all we need to do now is select our emitter maybe move it back a little bit hit R on your keyboard and rotate it 45 degrees to sort of project the emitter so we want it to sort of fly into the air and we might need to bump the speed up to around 1000 just because we've angled it and we need a little bit more speed like so cool. so now we've got our basic emitter done now what we need to do is add the attractor object and we can do that by selecting the same tab as we made our emitter and select attractor that's all good and we're just going to move the attractor just over here like so where the sphere starts to come down and if we select the attractor and then go to fall off we're going to change it from inf infinite to sphere and we're just going to increase the scale just to around there like so and we're going to move the attractor just over a little bit because what we want to get we want to get that scooping motion so we don't want the spheres to go directly into the middle of the attractor you want them to kind of scoop them up and that's what the fall off is for so if we hit play now what we're going to need to do is go to the attractor go to the object change the strength to 1000 and the speed limit to 350 and the speed limit is regarding how fast I will spin round and the strength is obviously the strength in which the attractor objects attracts the spheres so now that we've bumped the strength up and just turned down the speed limit a little bit what's going to happen now is we're going to really need to bump up the strength to maybe add an extra zero to make it 10,000 now that might seem a little bit over the top but don't worry if we play now you can see we get that really nice scooping swirly sort of effect cool and now what we're going to do we're going to keyframe the attractor so that it drops the spheres like in the example so we can do that by selecting the attractor and then if you just go on basic you're going to see enabled and what we're going to do is move to just after where the emitter stops so maybe frame 200 we're going to set a keyframe for the attractor being enabled hold down control and select the button next to enabled that's going to add a keyframe and it's turned red so that means we've made a keyframe and all we have to do is move forward just a few frames maybe five frames uncheck enabled and that's turned it yellow so it means we're waiting for another keyframe hold down control hit the yellow button it's turned it red so we have made another keyframe so what we've done what we've done in those two keyframes is basically just turn the attractor off that's all we've done and if we hit play now the attractor is going to come and swirl and scoop up all these spheres and then it's going to get to frame 200 
and then drop the spheres so that's all good and now we could do with adding some gravity so if we select gravity and you can select gravity from the same tab that we got our emitter and attractor from and what we're going to do is hit T on the keyboard and really scale the gravity up like so, so we've got a nice big box of gravity around our around our scene and what we're going to do what we're going to need to do again is we're going to need to keyframe the gravity because we don't want it to be effective at the start we only want it to be effective when the attractor stops so if we move to frame 200 uncheck enabled hold down control and select the button and that's going to turn it red so we've made a keyframe move forward five frames and enable the gravity that's turned it yellow meaning we are waiting for another keyframe to be made hold down control hit the yellow button and we have made another keyframe so what we've done there is basically turn the gravity on so it's not on at the start and then we've added two keyframes to turn it on just after the attractor stops so you can see that the spheres get brought down to the floor even quicker than they usually would like so that's all good and now what we're going to do we're going to add the wind so in the example you've seen the spheres all drop to the ground and then sort of fly off so to add the wind all you have to do is once again the same tab that we got our emitter and attractor from add a wind and what we're going to do we're going to rotate this 180 degrees just to face the other way like so and we're just going to move it all the way over here so if I zoom out just a little bit we're going to position the wind just there and once again like we did on the gravity and attractor we don't want it to be enabled at the start because it will mess up what we've already made so once again move to maybe frame 210 maybe 205 select the wind go on basic and uncheck enabled and like we did for the past two select enabled hold down control add a keyframe move forward five frames check enabled yellow keyframe so we need to add a keyframe hold down control click the yellow button turns it red so we've made a keyframe and then once we've done that if we play now what we've done there is basically once again turned the wind off at the start and turn the wind on as soon as the attractor stops so you can see the wind doesn't have much effect and that is because we need to select the wind go to object turn the wind speed up to maybe 150 and the turbulence to around 75 percent and if we hit play now just drinking some coffee if we hit play now we get that effect maybe that's a little bit too much maybe just the wind speed to 100 see how this is looking now drink some more coffee cool so there we go and there's also one more thing that I added and it's really simple we added another emitter in the example and that's really simple to do all you have to do is copy and paste the emitter that we've already made and move it all the way over here in the other direction and what you're going to need to do is just rotate it just to face the other direction and then rotate it back 45 degrees and it might take a little bit of playing around just to make sure Yep, so we're going to need to move that second emitter just forward a little bit. And 
maybe move it forward even a little bit more. Like I said, it's just trial and error of figuring out where to put your emitters and attractors. Might need to actually move this up just so it comes over the top of the attractor. Like so. And we might need to change the speed of the second emitter, so just bump up the speed to maybe 1200, see how that looks. Might need to move it back, so it's just about positioning the emitters just so it looks right. And you might also need to turn the strength up on the attractor to maybe 15,000. We'll see how this looks. Yep, so that's the kind of effect that we're looking for. And on the example, it was really simple to make the materials. All we have to do is make a new material. And we're just going to make it black. We're going to turn off specular and make it not quite black, but almost black like so. And then just apply that material to the emitter. And we can also apply that to the second emitter. So there we go, and also in the example I just added a overhead softbox from Grayscale Gorilla, so if I just pop that in there, you can see we get a nice overhead softbox there, and if we just go on the settings, what I'm going to do is change the shadow to area shadow, so change it from soft maps to area shadow, and you can do it with your own lights, you can add the usual Cinema 4D lights. And if we render now, we get that really cool effect of sort of 2D spheres, but we're actually casting 3D shadows on the floor. So that's really cool. And if we hit play now, there we go. That's pretty much how the scene is set up. I also added a camera, so maybe if you want some camera movement in there, you could do that as well. But there we go, there's how to create a emitter and attractor object within Cinema 4D. Hope you enjoyed and learnt something new. Don't forget to rate the video as well, guys, it really helps me out. So I will see you again very soon in another video tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.